Hmm? The literal person who order uh, I can judge. Do you do it, do you? Well, what? Decide to spend an extra day here, I can. I swear. When I, uh, sometimes I sit down to write to get things started. And, uh, today I changed the title. And I'll tell you after a while what it was. But it, the title that I settled for was Putting Life First, with a capital L. And I believe it's Elowa who's talking to us. It says, Putting Life First is giving yourself and all life the very best you have every moment. This would, of course, eliminate any negative thoughts, feelings, moods, attitudes, and desires. As God and life are one, putting life first would be putting God first, giving your best account to whatever you are doing at the moment. Right now you are listening to this message, so giving your best account would be giving your full attention to each word that moves into ideas and thoughts and absorbing that which you understand into your consciousness. Putting yourself first, that was the title that was, came first, really. Putting yourself first is putting God and life first. For you are God and you are life, all of life. This is in no way meant to be selfish or self-centered. You are an individual expression of God, of life. You owe your allegiance first to your Heavenly Father that dwells within you you and all his creations. You are one with all life everywhere present. You are your brother and sister keeper. All who breathe the breath of life are your kinsmen. The animals, birds, and even the minerals and earth are alive. The one life that is the creator, excuse me, that the creator is. In giving you the total, <coughs> excuse me, in giving you the title for this lesson tonight, we want to uh, express the most profound understanding that most on your planet are not aware of. It is that everything you experience, that your physical senses, with your physical senses on this dimension, is life, is God, expressing itself mostly through man and man's free will that God has given him. Now I feel what uh, someone would turn the right stare towards me. I think. <clears throat> As I move away from this consciousness, I would like to remind you that everyone here is a part of the channel, not just the one who speaks. Everyone is lending their life force to this expression, this message that is coming through. Let us see love and light filling this room and this circle of light reaching up as the teachers and masters reach down to us. Aloha. Good evening, my beloveds. It is indeed a pleasure to be here with you in person instead of your listening to the tape. We are pleased that you objected to this and allowed this to come through. Uh, a little cold is not enough reason for us not making this personal contact with you tonight. This is a beautiful circle of light, and I would remind you that your teachers and your guides and your friends, many, many of your friends that you may not remember, are here with you tonight, plus the ones who are here sitting in on this lesson to learn just as you are learning from this side of life. They have come because they wish to experience this uh, 
have this experience for they did not have the opportunity to have this while they were in the physical. As we move into this lesson, do not be concerned if it is a little halting, for Donald is not up to his potential in the physical. And we do have to express through the physical. But it is all right with us, and we see the love flowing from you and to the circle of light and to Donald so that he can release himself more fully to allow us to come through. As we move into this lesson tonight, I would ask you to consider putting yourself first, or in other words, putting life first, or in other words, putting God first. For you see, my dear ones, they are all the same. You are life and you are God. And as you put yourself first, you put yourself in a position to be a channel, to be open to the higher dimensions of love and light. Sometimes people play the role of martyr and they allow themselves to be abused or they uh, think that they have to allow different things from different people for some reason. And this is not the truth. When you are true to yourself, as your poet Shakespeare said, then you are putting yourself first so that you are true to yourself. And if you are true to yourself, then you cannot be untrue to anyone. As you allow your consciousness and your vibrations to rise in the morning, when you arise uh, from these planes back into your physical body, remember who you are. When you awaken, allow yourself to awaken with a beautiful thought of, good morning, God, I love you, and something like this, so that you can start your day in the right attitude, with the right feeling, in the right mood. Yes, I know that your body is still sleepy and that you may not be altogether in your body, but if you will make a habit of starting your day out this way, whether you feel it or not, again, assume the role and say the words. And as you say them, then a little later on, say them again. As you have your coffee or whatever you do to awaken uh, and go to the bathroom, say it several times. Good morning, God, I love you. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for this beautiful house that I live in. Thank you for this life that you have given me. There are so many, many things, my dear ones, to be grateful for. And when you do this, you see you are putting yourself first and you are starting with the right attitude and the right mood and you are a beacon unto the world and especially to those around you. Many of you have influenced others around you, and you know it. You know that you have influence. Some you may not know, but you do influence others around you when you send love. You see, when you send God's love, just unlabeled or anywhere, your aura is brightened and you have this beautiful countenance and others are attracted to it, whether it's on the conscious level or the unconscious level, and they see the beauty of God flowing through you. As you realize this, then it is easier for you to keep your thoughts high, to keep your thoughts away from fear or concern, or worry, or any of this other garbage, as you say, 
that has no place in a traveler on the road of light that is moving upward in consciousness to his Heavenly Father. As you realize, my dear ones, that God is the life force that you are, as you understand that he is continually there with you, feeling every feeling that you feel, thinking every thought that you thought, the mood, whatever, he is experiencing it with you because he and you are one. This is difficult for some to understand. And I would ask you to remember that divine love is the key to all things. God's love is the substance of all that created things and uncreated things. There is a created universe and an uncreated universe. And when you came from the Godhead into the created universe or the story of the Garden of Eden or many other stories that have expressed this, then you came in to the created universe and you took on form a little later and you started thinking from yourself apart from God. This was not a fall, my dear ones. You did it purposely to have the experience on these lower dimensions. There are some that did not do this, that have not left the Godhead and decided to stay home. But you have come to these lower dimensions to have these experiences to learn and to grow and to move higher in consciousness. And you are brave in doing this, my dear ones, for this is a place of darkness on this planet Earth relative to your real home on these higher dimensions. As you move through this incarnation, Remember that you have been many times to this planet, had many, many experiences, and have garnered the truth from many experiences in other lives. And you have come at this time to learn again. And most of you who come to a circle as this are ready to finish your karma on this plane and move up higher to another dimension. Whether you do it or not, my dear ones, is entirely up to you. And I have come to be with you and for many years, uh, as you think of time, I have, I do attend many circles on this planet and have worked with the people of the planet for some time now to help you to give up the old way of thinking and to realize that the way out is love, God's love. The key to all things is God's love. And when you understand this, and when you understand what God's love is, then you have a way of releasing yourself from this plane and moving on up to have higher experiences, more experiences on other dimensions, and not have to reincarnate on this plane again. There are books that Donald... Uh, has suggested to you, and the one called The Greatest Thing in the World is a book about divine love. There is much more to divine love than this book contains, but it is a good beginning place, and it gives nine attributes of divine love that 
you can start with to learn and to grow and to understand what love truly is. And when you practice patience and humility and kindness and all these other attributes, then you are practicing living the life of love, living the life of God, and allowing God to manifest through you. For my dear ones, this is your purpose in being, is to allow God to manifest through you. God gave you free will, but you can give it back to him by allowing him to manifest through you by being loving in your every thought, word, and deed. I know that this is not easy because you have been programmed and conditioned in other ways, but you can learn to do it, and you are learning to do it. Do not give up. This is the most important thing. As so many start this path of light, they find that their little self, the subconscious, it rebels and gives them a little trouble and they fall by the wayside and have to wait until something else happens or for another incarnation before they get back on the path of light. And it is so important that you remember to keep on keeping on. Or as the little book Christmas Humphrey wrote, Walk On. This is another beautiful book that will give you a great deal of understanding. Should we pause for a moment and give you opportunity to ask questions. As the new ones may understand or may not understand, uh, we do not answer personal questions, but questions about the lesson or spiritual matters. Are there questions here tonight? Hello, uh, yes. I understand that you were with the group, the Oasis group. Is that correct? Yes. And that you are still assisting this group and others, as you stated. What what dimension are you from originally? I will tell you this, my dear one, that when I uh, began with the Oasis group in 1956, I think our 55 in your time of counting I had just graduated to the sixth dimension and let us leave it at that and be not concerned about what dimension uh, one is coming from you judge by the message and if it is a message of love if it's good it's of God if it's not it's not there are many, many dimensions above the sixth dimension. And with your thinking and your language, it is difficult to communicate to you in, uh, completely about this because you are used to measuring time and space. And in true reality, there is no duality. There is no time or space. But there are as your master teacher said, in my father's house are many mansions. Now these mansions are the many dimensions, but they are also states of consciousness. And when an individual has reached a level of consciousness, say of the sixth dimension, then he can manifest on the sixth dimension that is a very bright and beautiful dimension of love and light and pure spirit. Does this answer your question? Yes, thank you. Could I ask one other question? Yes. Regarding, on the sixth dimension, I understand from other child entities that uh, the brothers who have overseeing of our weather, etc., with Terra and Earth, are on the sixth dimension. Is this a correct 
assumption? There are many, many who are working with your planet at this time from many dimensions. Uh, and it is a time, uh, the most opportune time, to be in the physical, in the history of your planet. And you have chosen to be in the physical at this time, for it is the time of great change, rapid change. And the new age, as you call it, is now fully in uh, your planet. And when uh, a few years back it was on the cusp, and now it is fully here. And for the next 2,000 years or so, around that many, uh, that length of time, your planet will be accelerating in raising its vibrations. In other words, the planet and everything on it will be raised in consciousness and vibration. And those who are of the darkness are who can uh, who are not ready to raise their consciousness cannot stand the higher vibrations and will have to incarnate on another planet that is comparable to where this planet has been. Now this you were getting at another question, my dear one. Would you go ahead? Yes, you opened the question for me then that uh, we had been getting information that this transformation and energy increase was to be more or less into it and I won't say complete because probably not complete for a long time but I was led to understand that within the next 20 or 30 years we would probably move into that point of time then to where we would have began the millennium of, as we find in our book of Revelations. Yes. And let me say this to you that our langu your language is sometimes confusing and it is difficult to communicate with you in the language. But the uh, Aquarian age, as it is known to most uh, who are in on this path of light, is now here. And an age is 2100 and some odd years. And it is divided up into the 12 zodiacal signs, as you call them. And we have come out of the Piscean Age now. And when the Master Teacher came uh, 2,000 years ago, he ushered in, in a sense, the Piscean Age. And it has been said that an avatar comes uh, to show the way within each age. And when the Christians had to go underground, they had to go in secret, and they would make the sign of the fish on the sand to let others know that they were of this secret organization, that they had to keep secret from being killed or prosecuted, persecuted. Now, in, at the turn of the century, many things are happening. They are already happening. And your weather is changing, and it will continue to change more. Be not concerned about this, my dear ones. It will inconvenience some, but it is lessons to be learned lessons that are very important and those that are in the place like you have recently had have these lessons to learn and everyone my dear ones 
are always in their right place, the place that their consciousness has placed them in. And if you realize this and can accept it, then you know that everything is all right. And no matter what happens on your planet, you are still in God's hands. For my dear ones, you are not physical beings. You are not the body or the mind even. You are spiritual beings. And it matters not if you lose your body. This is just a, no more than your automobile that you drive. And your mind is no more than your house that you live in. Let us take, for example, those who lost their homes in this recent hurricane. Uh, that is symbolic of their consciousness or of their minds. And it is saying to them, a message to them, that you need to change your consciousness. You need to tear down the old and build the new. You need to turn loose of the old concepts of fear and anxiety and worry and doubt and take hold of the new concepts and be not concerned about material wealth or material things. You need to have the material wealth and the money, as you call it, to take care of your physical body. But when you are overly concerned about it, you give all your energies to this and cheat your soul, for you do not feed your soul by giving it its proper uh, amount of time to go within and have this time with the Heavenly Father that is within you and allow the quietness, the stillness, and the peace to come forth into your consciousness and to feed your soul. Does this help your understanding? Yes. Real quickly, and then I'll let someone else ask questions, but for a point of perspective and comprehension, would it be fair answer to say that for those of us who want to complete the transformation, we can do that in the next 20 or 30 years. And those who wish to prolong it and, and live into the next thousand or so years, they can do that also. Yes, you are free, my dear ones, to do whatever you can believe that you can do. For you are truly gods, and you know it not. You are truly gods, and you know it not. If you knew it, you would be not be dwelling on this plane unless you had come to serve. Now, as you move higher in consciousness, as you eliminate the fear and all the negatives and destructive thoughts from your house, your mind, then you move in to the understanding that you are truly gods and that you are creating your life as it is thought by thought, moment by moment, hour by hour, day by day. With your every thought, word and deed, you are creating your life and your future as you think of time. And so whatever you decide that you want to do or how long you want to stay, and in true reality, you could this moment move in to the consciousness of your godhood. If you had that contact with the God within you and allow it to come forth in its fullness, 
Do you understand this? Yes, thank you very much. God bless you. Are there other questions this evening? Would you speak louder so it will be on the tape, please? If you understand in your head that you are God, how do you get it to your heart so you really feel it and believe it so that you can um, feel the oneness of God? By practice, my dear one. And when I say practice, I mean uh, sending God's love spending the time of meditation, going within, reading the books that help to inspire you, uh, continuing on the path until you can reach in to that place where you know who you truly are and not just know about it. When you read about it in a book, then you know about it. But to know it, you have to experience it. And when you are open enough and your motives are in the right place and you have worked with yourself to bring yourself in alignment with yourself, your total self, then the light of God can come down and awaken your consciousness to the full realization of your godhood. This you have been working towards for many lifetimes and it is up to each individual as to when that time of full awakening comes to them. Does this help your understanding? Yeah, thank you. Yes. Are there other questions? You see, my dear ones, when you put yourself first, when you put your consciousness, your motives for being first in your life on the path of light, divine light and love, and put God first in your life, then you are placing yourself in a position to have this awakening. And I tell you, it is up to you and no one else, for God has given you the freedom to stay in these lower dimensions or to do whatever you like as long as you want. And when you look at your news and you see that someone has killed 10 or 12 people and you wonder why this God would let this happen, you see, my dear ones, God did not let it happen. He has given everyone free will. And if the ones whose lives were whose physical lives were cut short, supposedly, if you knew the truth about this, you would know that it was settling some karma or it was time for them to leave this physical plane. There are no mistakes. There are no accidents. There is no coincidence. And when you can truly see this and understand it, then life makes sense to you and you can see the truth through the veil of illusion. This physical plane is truly illusion. It is just a play on a stage as Shakespeare said and when you understand this and allow yourself to look at it in this way without judgment our condemnation, just knowing that everyone and everything is in their right place and always will be. And if you wish to be in a higher place of consciousness, then you have the choice to reach out, or should I say, to reach in 
for God is within you, but then you can also reach out to a center like this, our two classes that would help you to awaken your inner understanding. When you read a good book that is helping you, that is giving you uh, the understanding about divine love and light, or when you come to a class that is helping you to clean out your subconscious, then you are opening the door for the inner to come forth and so that you can see with the inner eye instead of just with the outer dual eyes. Are there other questions this evening? I have a question. Yes. Why is it that sometimes um, people are frightened when they see what they perceive as a miracle? And tonight I was mentioning that there was, on the news there was uh, something about a miracle that had occurred in a community that I teached. And it frightened my daughter. I wondered why it is that sometimes people are frightened by times or not. People are frightened by the unknown. When they do not understand something, then it frightens them. Because for many lifetimes you have been conditioned and programmed to fear. And it is mostly through greed of the leaders of the land at the time that you were in the physical that they controlled you through fear and so that they could have whatever they wanted to in their greedy consciousness at that time. Now, you purposely put yourself in these positions to go through these experiences to understand, because as you have been told, you really do not know anything until you experience it. And when you have the experience and then rise above it, then and are, are enlightened with the truth, then you know. Now there are many times when you go through the same experience over and over without the enlightenment and do not allow the doors to be open to the inner you to bring forth the light of understanding. And so you suffer much, and, but it is all necessary if it takes a hundred times or a thousand times for you to receive the enlightenment on one thing, then it is necessary until you give up and allow the light to come through into your consciousness and allow God's love to be your beacon on your path. Everyone will have enlightenment in their own time, in their own way, and all are different, and we should not try to judge by outer appearances, but judge righteous judgment and allow each one to have their time of awakening without judgment or condemnation. Does this help your understanding? Yes, it does. Thank you. Yes. You had another question, did you not? I just wonder what would be the best way to help her understand best. If she requires my help, which she did ask or she didn't understand it and she was frightened. Yes. Um, when you are asked, then try to explain but use many different avenues of explanation. Approach it from many points of view until uh, 
your little one does receive the enlightenment. And it may not come at that time. It may be a week or a month, but you can still come back to that point and say, remember when you asked me about this. Now here's an example. And soon she will receive the enlightenment. But be patient and know that God is working within her as well as within you and in everyone else. And it will come. It is a beautiful thing to see the parents and the children working together in love to receive enlightenment and to know that God is dwells within each and is awakening within each of you according to your free will and according to your choice according to your time that you choose God bless you my dear one are there other questions This is a beautiful circle of light this evening, and each of you have many things that you would know. Each of you have a different understanding of life because you are all individual expressions of God. And when you are open enough to reach higher in consciousness and give a little time each day. God does not require too much of your time, but if you will give just one-tenth of your time to read a good book, to meditate, to go within, to do your homework, if you're coming to a class, if you will do this, my dear ones, it, it will soon be your time of full awakening if you do it with sincerity and with the motive, pure motive, of wanting to know, of wanting to reach higher in consciousness Could I ask a question? Yes. To Don? Is there something that Don could do for this cult? Yes, and he knows what uh, it is required. It is each individual uh, has their own guidance, and it is for each individual to ask for themselves. And this is not scolding you. It, I know that your motive is good, but it is, let us say, it is a cleansing process. Some of you, when you uh, become what you call ill, are just having a cleansing and allowing the dross to come up to the surface. And there are times when it comes up a little faster than it should, or that you can handle or do handle at the time. And so the balance is then lost, and you are, for a short time, out of balance. And most of you in this circle know what I mean by this, because you have had these experiences. and. When you allow the spirit of God's love and his healing power to come through, then you can bring back the balance in a short time. 
This is a good question. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Are there other questions this evening? I would have you each and every one to know that your loved ones from this side, whether they are your relatives, your friends, your teachers, or your guides, all send their love to you and wish me to express their love for you and want you to know, each and every one, that you are loved dearly and when you feel as you go through your sojourn on this earth plane that you feel alone and separated, remember this and reach for their hand in, in your mind and feel their love because it is there and when you open your heart to them you will receive a great abundance of love and when you open your mind you will receive a great abundance of understanding they yearn for you to know this they yearn for you to reach for their help for this is their purpose when they are with you you are their charges and they wish to help in every way possible and when you open the door by thinking of them and sending love to all the invisibles around you then you do open the door and if there are those of the darkness they will have to leave and the ones who are there to help you you are opening the pathway to understanding and help this has been a beautiful time of togetherness and it will there will be many more times as this and you who are not here all the time or who live separate may consider sending for the tapes they are very nominal and keeping up with our circle of light and allowing yourself to on Wednesday nights if you're not here in the physical in your mind place yourself in this circle of light at this time or at any time because in true reality there is no time and if you would like when you place yourself in this circle your power of love and light is multiplied as many times as there are people in the circle remember this my dear ones and keep love going before you let it be your motto for God is love and you are made from the substance of God's love God bless you my dear ones and good evening shall we stand and hold hands as we come together in the physical by holding hands let us bring down the spirit of love and light the joy and the peace that we have been given by these teachers and all the beautiful ones who have come to be with us for the invisible side of life remember that they are one with us, that we are one with them. Let's feel the love going around this circle, building up momentum, filling this room, spreading out over this city, and covering this planet. And let us be open enough to see God's love from this circle going out to the whole universe, for there is no limit of the power of God's love.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Stephen. Bow a house, come on. Or you should have a cold one. Yeah. Yeah. Why did he not have one? So tall, tall. Chan so he says, if you got a false thing, not after you spent crowns, George. Yeah. <laughs> I thought maybe you were asleep when I coughed close that though. There are times when I talk so much that I get a little hoarse and uh, in the last few years my voice has cracked up a little bit but uh, and I thought that's all it was but maybe that's all it was. I mean it just may be an illusion it's cold it was and the Aloha said you knew how to get rid of it. She what? He said you knew how to get rid of it. Oh. So, the people told you that you knew what you had to do. Mm -hmm. Oh. He didn't tell you a secret on me, but... No. <laughs> uh, yeah, he did one or two. He <laughs> wanted to. But there are another way. No. Mm -hmm. We have an interpreter. Yeah. You didn't have a cold while you were channeling. Didn't it feel like it? No. I didn't have any problems. Were you aware of what you were telling? At the moment, in about 30 minutes, I won't have the least idea yeah. that's what it's all about. Yeah. But right now, it's fading. And, but I, Elowa, I was so attuned to him and, and Jesus that uh, I usually don't have any trouble. Well, that was. It was stronger tonight than it was last Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. And I'm very clear and very, that's just that first trump. What's the man named this for not, uh, listening to the tape? For not what? For not, for not listening to the tape. For great jumping. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the tape's still running, and so if you want to talk about anything, we, you just let it run hard. How long did you think channel the aloe? That was the first person to in at the channel? Aloe? Oh no. That you know, I became a part of the group uh, in nineteen fifty six. We there's only two or three that didn't learn to channel or didn't want to be a channel. Group. Back in Oklahoma, there were between 20 and 30 in the group. And when we moved to Arizona, I think we wound up with 17 when I left the desert 20 years ago. And now I was the youngest of the group, so they moved out here. Uh, a lot of them have graduated to a higher point. I don't know. Now I'm back there, according to that book that she loaned me, they were using the Ouija board. And then later, uh, you guys began the channel area without the Ouija board. Yes. Uh -huh. The board ball. Yeah, we were um, sitting on the patio uh, one evening, uh, getting dark, you know. And uh, I think Alice was channeling, and um, it got dark, and the board's still moving, but the words still came the and we've been thinking about giving up the board we it we thought it was uh, something that the new people could concentrate on and accept a little better but we were wrong about that I think. it seems to be the mold for quite a few to start with this week yes uh -huh. it gives them something to concentrate on the, the crystal ball, the palm, tea leaves, widget board, whatever, that's a point of contact. And that gives you something to concentrate on to get your mind off, out of the physical world. On focus. Mm-hmm. And uh, when the board would move very rapidly after we got started with it, and uh, 
really, I don't think your physical consciousness could keep up with it, but the words, most, about half of the group would know a sentence or two before it even came, you know, would know what was going to be said. Why did you start channeling Jesus? Well, uh, Jesus came to us uh, shortly after Ella was dead. And he would come every once in a while, and uh, it was a treat to have him. And even God spoke to us a few times. And it was a little upsetting for some people, but uh, we got to think he might. Goodness, God created the whole universe. Why couldn't he talk to us? And in the Bible, you know, it, almost every other paragraph, it says God spoke to them and said thus and such. Our angel of the Lord appeared to them and spoke to them. They were so afraid or something. It was a beautiful time, the awakening. Is Alba still the main channeled entity of you? Well, I'm sure he probably is, yes. Um, they don't channel at the Oasis anymore, or at least they said that. No, I think they do every once in a while. But uh, I asked Alberta, I said, no, we had a channel in three years. Because Alex is, and uh, was a, some people like the channel and some don't. And Alice was one of the main channels. And she went through about six or seven incurable diseases and overcome them. You know, and remarkable uh, things that she has accomplished. One of the things that Kelly was saying and I was questioning about. Maybe you um, share something with us about it. It's talking about uh, it'll be a 2,000 year period of time now. And I was trying to get that a little clearer because it was a little bit different than I've heard it from other. You know, there's uh, this book, The Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'll, I'll glance at that. And in the front of that, it, it explains uh, what the New Age is and what a Christ is. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah. And uh, that was channeled through a fellow named Levi, I guess, going to the turn of the century or early part of the century. And uh, the, uh, the way I understand it is our sun and its planets travels around another huge sun, much larger than it is, and it takes a little less than 26,000 years to make the complete cycle. And that's divided up into 12 zodiacal signs. And we come out of the Piscean age now, we're in the Aquarian age then. And it's been known as the Golden Age. And we've been in many Golden Ages. It's a time when there's an abundance of everything. There's no shortage of anything. And, and our technology, uh, is raised and but we've destroyed our civilization over and over because we didn't uh, raise our spiritual understanding to the height of our technology and also our psychic abilities uh, come into play and uh, we use them in a way that is not loving and uh, destroyed the current letter, the civilization, all the history with it. There's a little bit known about Lemuria and uh, Atlantis, and there's another one that uh, was spoken of, I can't remember the name of it, but there's been many, many civilizations since the Earth was formed that all the records were destroyed. So. But they're in our subconscious mind. See, that's where the Book of Life is. 
the Bible talks about it. It's a memory bank, it's a soul memory. I read when I was started into medicine, I was raised. 